Hi guys, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about teen uh, sexuality, uh, specifically teens that are active, sexually active uh, in foster care, because you know, that's what I work with, foster care kids. And um, <clears throat> you know, there is a double standard in society when it comes to guys, you know, young boys, teenagers. So the boys will be boys type thing. Uh, um, but the reality of life is the same stuff or, or consequences that befall a girl falls on a boy too. And um, in my situation or in, in the past that I've encountered, um, unfortunately, it's not really the boys that was giving me the issue. Uh, boys would experiment and things like that, but they don't go to the extreme, whereas girls do. And just a recap, because I did a video about teenagers do it, going through a retard stage. Uh, the myelin in the brain, which is an insulation type that wraps around the neurons, that uh, the neurological pathways um, between from the back of the brain to the front of the brain, and um, that myelin is not is an insulation that allows um, more efficient tr transmission of information to the um, the frontal lobe or the thought where uh, you know most thoughts are processed uh, and towards more the back of the brain further back you got the um, the pleasure center which is more enlarged as a teen during the teenage stage of life and eventually it shrinks back down becomes smaller than the frontal lobe um, so that's hyperactive at this time in a kid's life. Now, throw in neglect, um, abuse, physical and sexual abuse, and um, you know, starvation. I guess comes from neglect, or even watching a loved one die, either from a, a drug-related incident like overdosing or uh, a shooting. You throw all that in a mix when you're working with foster care kids. Um, you know, who didn't have some of the comforts that we grow up as, say, well, normal people, if there's any such thing. Um, you take all that into account, and it doesn't matter how many years have passed where a, a child is in a, in a foster care home, even if they're in that foster care, one foster care home, and they've been there for years, um, that trauma is still there. Not necessarily, and if there's no trauma like that, the kids can remember the effects, the physical, physiological effects of neglect um, is still present in the, in those children. And <clears throat> as they become teenagers, and they, you know, they don't really, they don't really know their family. Um, you know, no one really in common to um, that they can relate to. Uh, even though they love and respect you for being there for them. As foster care providers, um, something is missing with the with, with if the parents or blood re family or relatives are not involved, as I mentioned in another video dealing with incest. Now, with sexuality, uh, well, a hundred years ago or so, 100, 150 years ago, um, teenagers, you know, thirteen and up, you know, they were considered adults, so. Marriage, uh, sex, uh, sexual activity, um, birth, you know, having children and stuff was not a real a major issue because um, the body is developed to some extent to be able to do those things. But you know, as we all know, the mind doesn't really fully develop until about age mid twenties, and that's in girls. And in in men, it's early to late 30s before our brains are fully developed and uh, the unfortunate thing with, with with the cycle is that you know people are getting married and so forth young uh, uh, you know, teens having kids that are young not really knowing what they're getting into and then in the past hundred years or so you see a change a shift where <clears throat> You know the laws against uh, my minors, uh, you know, sexual activities and things like that. Um, and then there's another shift that's occurring now that people um, not 
a lot of people I'm um, speaking to are not taking into account. Technology has advanced where <clears throat> it mirrors um, old customs uh, 100 years, 200 years ago, 1,000 years ago, where um, <clears throat> and the speed at which these things are occurring as far as relationships are going. Um, where for younger people, it's not, you know, even though me being, you know, growing up in the modern era where it's frowned upon, um, the teenagers, the next generation, they're not frowning upon it kind of like how it was 200 years ago. So they, um, and with the advent of the internet, social media, they're able to communicate at a more, much rapid pace. Um, sending lewd pictures and things of each other across the internet instantly and though those will have a negative effect say in their professional life uh, or a political life if they choose to go into politics um <clears throat> the reality is that it's here and they're using it and um it's unfortunate with the double standards of the boys will be boys thing I carry the same strict rules with the boys as I do with the girls, but um, in one particular girl, um, she gave me a whole lot of stress at one time, was that she, you know, just keep, wouldn't leave the boys alone, and she would go the distance, and even though I've had her for years, and we've, I've taught her everything that I could possibly teach her from a guy's perspective, um, <clears throat> concerning relationships, um, that uh, pleasure center <clears throat> is seems to have more power over my words, and um, she would uh, go if it, she had to be in a relationship with a boy, and if if you know, and in the beginning, as foster care providers, one of the mistakes. Well, I wouldn't say it's a mistake, but I did, I was confused. Because I had raised her a certain way and had taught her certain things. So, you know, around that age, teenagers play around. They, you know, test their, test certain limits. They get involved in some, you know, form of relationship or another. Uh, I know I did when I was growing up as a teenager. But I ne we then never took it that far because our parents would have whooped our ass. Or, you know, the teachers would have been on us. But it's a different mindset today. There's a lot more stress on the teachers, a lot more things they got to look out for. And um, so they're unable to be how they used to be. Um, so my, um, the, the kids, this, this young lady, um, <clears throat> I when she got involved with the first relationship, I figured, oh, well, you know, it's around that time. You know, when I started messing around with girls, maybe, you know, but I knew better and didn't really bother to go too far with that. And unfortunately, she went all out. to the, And it gave me an insight into maturity. Kids, because there are a couple of kids in that same age group, some of her friends who were involved in relationships, but the maturity level were completely different than hers. Um, academically, her grades, she lost interest in her, her grades, she, in her schoolwork, she lost interest in her sports and any other activity except for the boy. And it confused me leading up to that point where I see the negative effects because I wasn't sure if I should allow them to, to date or not. And because I didn't want anything you know, in my mind, I don't want her sneaking off into the night, going somewhere. And things like that, and I wasn't even I wasn't even sure of my own power, so I believe. But that became once the grades start falling, and I really found something that I really need to take a stand stand on with the grades and her all the uh, opportunities she was about to let fall apart that she's that took her years to develop. I went ahead and um, really put my foot down, and from then on, I've have have to put my foot down repeatedly. Um, because week after week, I'm literally week to week as a different guy. Uh, and fortunately, I'm able to put the flames out before it go beyond talk. Um, and it is exhausting. But because I care about their future, I do that. 
I am so fortunate that not all of them are doing it at the same time. <laughs> so it's just from one. So as far as, you know, I had you know, taken into account brain activity, <clears throat> myelin function of the brain, the over-sexualization of t TV shows, movies, internet, the easy, more access to porn pornography, and uh, peer pressure, want, want to be validated. Yeah, I got a man. Or yeah, I got a girl. Or with their friends. As though that's a badge of honor. And um, I guess the tip in all this... I would say is that if you're in foster care and you're encountering these uh, kids that's hyperactive, sexually active, you uh, rather than give up or you know send them off somewhere else, um, <clears throat> stand your ground, put out those fires, and make sure and keep repeating the same stuff. Eventually, they you know they'll get to an age you know here in Maryland is 16 where they can uh, consent to sex and stuff like that. And 18, obviously, when they we consider an adult, um, they will make those decisions on their own and be held responsible for their own uh, their own consequences that follow. Um, so, in the meantime, you got to be that brain for them, and uh, don't give up. Um, Keep putting out the fires, keep checking their social media stuff. If you have a really wayward one that you really cannot control, um, you know, it's out of your hands. Just make sure they have a place to come home to. And when they mess up or during their, their messing up stage, because a lot of times, too, they're doing this stuff thinking, oh, this person's going to give up too, just like my family. And um, they're just doing, may just be doing this stuff, the self-destructive stuff, to test uh, your resolve. And if you look at them as though they are your blood children, you tend to, you will tend not to give up. And that's how I look at them. Fortunate, un well, I don't know if it's fortunate or unfortunate. I do not have kids of my own. I have these kids, and. You know, I knew them through a relationship that fell apart, my ex-girlfriend, and it was her relatives that I kept and raised. So, um, the work is hard, especially when dealing with foster care kids, especially with the neglect. Um, we as foster care parents cannot give up, and if you have one that's sexually active, um, you know, they are they're already aware of all the about birth control they're aware of diseases out there and because of their the brain function they don't care and um we gotta and if it's a one that's really hard to control there's nothing you can really do but keep repeating yourself and make, make sure the door is always open for that teenager and make sure the tools are provided even the, the tools that they need to succeed, even if they do not use those tools. Um, so, uh, if any of y'all in the same situation as, as I am, you know, leave a comment in the section below. Ask questions specific to the topic, and I'll do my best to respond from my personal experience and the things I've studied. Like, if you like the video, and subscribe. And I'll go ahead and put out more videos. Y'all have a good day.